Hi everybody, this video is a follow-up video from my uh, description of my mini split system that we installed. When I shot the original video, it was during the summertime, and we talked a little bit about air conditioning and that it actually can do heating. Uh, but now that we are in the winter season in Michigan, I thought I would do another follow-up video to answer one of the questions that everybody keeps asking is, how much does it actually cost to run, especially to heat the house? And so one of the things that I did was I wrote a blog post on mattknowsthat.com that describes the comparison of fuel costs when you're considering switching fuels from natural gas to electricity, which is what a lot of people are going to be doing with a heat pump, or from uh, propane, like I'm using in my boiler, to electricity in a heat pump or electric resistance. And the most common way to do that comparison is in the cost per million BTUs, because it's an equalizing factor that doesn't matter then how efficient your house is or what climate you're in, the heating cost per million BTUs is what we want to make those comparisons based on. And for my house, the comparison happened to be electricity at about 12 and a half cents a kilowatt hour uh, versus propane at about $2 per gallon and my boiler is 82% efficient. And right now in Michigan, I've got my thermometer here that shows us what the outside temperature is. Uh, it says it's 35 right now. The sun is shining just a little bit on where this thermometer is. Uh, and it's, uh, so it's really, only, I think, only about 31 or 32 degrees outside. Uh, indoor temp, this says 67.4. Uh, it's because I'm in my office and I have the door closed right now. But the house is actually at about 69 degrees. And uh, so one of the things that I did to actually monitor the actual electric use of my heat pump system is I hooked my whole house energy monitor up to it. Uh, I have this device that's been sitting on my desk for a long time now. It sits just back in the corner and runs. Um, and I had this hooked up so that it would monitor the energy use of the whole house, the electricity use. And I decided that I wanted to monitor just the electric use of the heat pump system to see really how much electricity it was using. And right at this particular second, and it updates about every three seconds, uh, it's using 1.45 kilowatts, which equates to $4.85 per day, $146 per month. Uh, and that's keeping, again, from 30-something degrees outside to almost 70 degrees inside at $147, $150 a month. So that's the cost to run this, uh, uh, this electric heat pump. And uh, these, these energy monitor devices, you know, they're only about 100 to $200. This one was $200. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description to one, uh, uh, the Effergy model. There's a Black & Decker model. You can find them for, for about 100 bucks. They're really simple to install. You put two little clips on the power feeds to, that come into your electric box. You don't have to be an electrician to, to install them. Uh, if you're afraid of your electric box, then maybe you'll want to have somebody uh, else do it for you. Uh, but you can also, instead of monitoring the whole house, you can monitor an individual appliance and let it run. And this is, I've had this hooked up this way for about a week. And one of the things that I discovered when I plugged this into my heat pump system is that even when the heat pump is not running, it's using 164 watts, which is a lot of electricity. And I emailed uh, Fujitsu to ask them why this thing has such a big ghost load or vampire load as they sometimes call it. Uh, and they sent me back some hocus pocus thing about power factor that really doesn't have any effect on anything. And so basically the things when they're sitting there waiting for us to turn them on with the remote control, like a TV or anything else, it's using electricity, but it's using a little more than I'd like it to. 164 watts uh, equates to about 15 bucks a month when it's just sitting there idle. So one of the things that I'm going to do is to put a switch in up here near the thermostat where we hang the thermostat on the wall, a little light switch that I can turn it on and off that will turn the mini split system completely off when we've turned it off and we're running on the boiler or during the summertime when we've got all the windows open when we're not running the system, I want to be able to shut it off. In the meantime, I'm going to throw it off at the circuit breaker because I was really surprised at how much of a ghost load it has. So uh, if you haven't watched the original mini split video, I'll put a link to it so that you can go and watch that video right now. 
Uh, if you want to go to my website and download a cost per million BTUs uh, sheet, I think I've got one right here. I posted one on Matt Knows That that you can download a two-page PDF of it. Uh, keep in mind that if your system uh, is rated in a different factor than COP, which is a coefficient of performance, then you have to do a little bit of math to, to convert it because uh, the heating side of these things is rated in uh, heating season performance factor. And you can see that mine is, is 21.5. It's kind of neat that this scale goes all the way up to 21, so mine is so efficient that it's completely off the chart for both of these. So that's kind of neat. Um, if you have any questions about about that, about the energy use, um, you know, about cost per million BTUs. If you can't figure out how to calculate it, go ahead and make a comment down in the comment section. If you decide you want to get an energy monitoring device to see what your electric use is of the whole house or an individual circuit, please use the Amazon link down in the in the description. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.